what you're basically saying is that poor people live in dirtier communities, like poor people live in dirtier air. Poor people experience dirtier, more dangerous air. But it's not just poverty. It turns out that there's also disparities in exposure by race and ethnicity, even controlling for the level of income. Are minorities just like running into smog? We did a pretty exhaustive study in California. Some colleagues in Michigan did the same study. And what we found is it's not that. It's not that people sort of sniff around looking for the dirtiest air that they can move close to. In fact, these facilities and freeways tend to be placed in these communities of color when the communities are already there. And so it's really a question of sighting and not a question of moving. It turns out that 63% of Latinos think that climate change is a very serious issue in California. Only 43% of whites think climate change is a very serious issue. So a lot of times when we imagine the people who are concerned about the climate, the picture is a sort of a you know tall white guy with a beard uh, munching granola and wearing spandex before he gets on his bicycle to roll forward. It turns out that the person that's the most concerned about climate change are the families living near the refineries, breathing the dirty air, experiencing the front lines of climate change. That's a constituency that, yes, might be affected by higher energy prices, but deeply wants climate change issues to be addressed, deeply wants pollution issues to be addressed, uh, really wants forward progress on these issues. They're understanding what the threats are from pollution, and they're amongst the most loyal allies in terms of the sort of broad tent that we need to build to deal with climate change. It's got to be a broad tent that includes these emerging communities of color, that includes the traditional environmental movement, that includes the public sector and what they can do, and that includes the innovative uh, business folks who can actually respond and develop the new technologies and lead the way to what we need to do to have a healthier California. Is the white guy with the bicycle eating the granola under the tent? The white guy with the granola and the bicycle is definitely under the tent. The point I make is that sometimes he doesn't necessarily realize who's under the tent with him, or could be. What I've basically learned here is that it's pretty much the responsibility of just that one tree hugger with that bicycle, right? Well, I'm afraid that maybe I didn't quite impart the lesson correctly. It's that the tree hugger with the bicycle needs to care about the immigrant mother in Wilmington. It's that the business person starting a successful enterprise in the Bay Area needs to worry about the farm worker in Fresno who's not doing well. It's that we need to care deeply about each other, an older generation, about a younger generation, in order to have a strong California moving forward. Now, if you put all of those people that you mentioned together... You could have a party. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's all in the apps.